So this is an example of a computer simulation which shows pendulum motion. So over here in our pendulum uh, simulation, I've set the value of gravity to 9.8 to reflect Earth. Set damping to zero, so that's basically like friction. So we're saying this is perfect case scenario, no friction. Um, the beginning velocity of the pendulum is zero, and I've given it, an, it a small angle. Um, so I started with length 0.8 meters, just simply because the longer lengths, if you have a look here, if I change that to 1.8, well, the pendulum is too big to be seen. So if I change it back to 0.8, it allows us to see it, and we'll go up to about 1.2 meters. All right, so I want a time from the extremes of motion. So when the pendulum begins its motion, I'll start the stopwatch, and we'll time for 10 periods. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so I've gotten just under 18 seconds. All right, so I'll go to my Excel, I'll type in our time for 10 periods was 17.907. And I already set up for my period to just divide the number by 10 and the period squared to multiply that number by itself. So I've now changed it to 0.9 meters and I've reset our stopwatch and we'll get started for 10 periods at 0.9 meters. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so I've got 18.951 meters there. So I'll go 18.951. And then we'll go to change this to one meter. Get my stopwatch back up, clear that. We'll do 10 periods for this. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so around about twenty seconds. So again, I'll chuck that value in here. Twenty point three three three. All right, so now I'll change the length to one point one meters. And again, restart my stopwatch. So 10 oscillations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so I've got 21.295. So again, I'll go to my We'll chuck that in and we can do the next one which is at 1.2 meters so I'll change this over to 1.2 meters reset my timer get ready to start one two three four five six seven eight, nine, ten. So I've got 22.03 there, 22.03. So now I've got all the values that I need to begin to plot a graph. So what I want to do is I want to insert a scatter graph. <coughs> so I'll get rid of all the data series just to show you how to get the correct data series up. So I'll move my chart over here and we'll check select data. We'll add a series. Now the x value is referring, of course, to what's on our horizontal axis. So we want our length on the horizontal axis. So I'll select my length. And then our vertical axis, we want to be period squared. Okay, so I'll select my period squared values. Okay, and we end up with a graph that, you know, it looks all right. So we'll go OK. Now I can cheat in Excel, and I can add a trend line. So I want to display the equation of the trend line. And the equation there, remember we're interested in the gradient, so we've got 
as being our gradient. All right, considering we should be uh, looking at how to analyze this if we don't have something like Microsoft Excel. So this is you know a general kind of graph you'd be confronted with in your um, HSC or your trials or whatever. So you've got a graph of five data points. You know they'll ask you to construct a line of best fit, and then use that line of best fit to help you determine the acceleration due to gravity. So our first step is to find two points that lie on the line of best fit. So usually in your data you'll have at least two points that lie on that line of best fit. And to me it looks like well, pretty much the first data point. So we've got length of 0 0.8 period squared of 3.2066. And then perhaps the last data point, so I've got length of 1.2 and period squared of 4.85. So the only time that you can actually use your data in your table is if those points actually do lie on your line of best fit. If you've got a line of best fit that does not go through two points and you need to make up the points yourself, but again you need to show how you've come to those points. So let's have a look at these two points which we're using. So we're using my first point down here and my second point up there. Now I need to show like really basically like how you'll do it in year 9 or 10 maths or whenever you do all this stuff, determining gradients. I want to figure out the, the rise and I want to figure out the run. Okay, so my first value um, over here, so let's say I want to figure out my delta y. So delta y is equal to, so my change in y is 4.85, let's just go to two decimal places, 4.85 uh, minus 3.21. Okay, so that'll give me a value of 1.64 second squared. Now my delta x is 1.2 minus 0 0.8, which is 0 0.4 meters. So now I have all the values that are needed to determine my gradient. So I know that my gradient is just delta y over delta x. So we figured out our delta y as being 1.64. We figured out our delta x as being 0 0.4. So if we plug that into our calculator, we get our gradient is equal to around about 4.1. Okay, and for Earth, you should always expect your gradient of being equal to around about 4. And we'll see right, we'll see why now. So if our, I now use our formula for g, so our formula for g is 4 pi squared L over T squared, which we know simplifies to 4 pi squared over our gradient. Okay, so our gradient we just previously figured out as being 4.1. So that comes out to be 4 pi squared over 4.1, which comes out to be about 9.63 ms to the minus 2. Okay, so if our value of gradient is around about 4, that means that our value of g is around about pi squared because the 4s cancel out. If you plug in pi squared into your calculator, you see it actually comes out to be about 9.87. So we're looking for a value of a gradient of around about 4 um, if we're finding acceleration due to gravity on Earth. 